Hi, this is Greg Benz with a quick video tutorial on how you can take an image like this straight out of the camera and use Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop to turn it into an image like this. Uh, and one of the key features I want to focus on in this tutorial is how to use the power of a technique called luminosity masking uh, in Photoshop, and I'll explain that later to really help draw out the, the color and the vibrance in your sky. A lot of times uh, the sky is very bright, um, can look very white, pretty washed out, and bringing that detail back if it exists in the photo can be kind of tricky, uh, especially when you're dealing with an area like this where you've got the sky kind of intermingling with trees and other details. So it's kind of hard to, uh, to isolate that. So I'll show that in a minute, but let's just start with uh, first the, uh, the techniques that I used actually within uh, Adobe Lightroom. So here is the uh, original image with uh, no adjustments applied to it. And here you see the adjustments I've made in Lightroom. And essentially, um, there's just a few. Uh, the first was that the image is actually a bit underexposed. It was a 30 second exposure on my D800, which uh, is not normally the kind of uh, miss that I'd want. Um, but I was working rather quickly. Light was uh, changing rapidly. And um, with uh, the D800 at ISO 100, you can actually uh, get away with uh, a decent amount of mist. Not that I'd uh, recommend it, but uh, in this case, it was just kind of what I came up with. So not what I'd usually do, but boosted the exposure by a full stop here to, uh, to get the tones where I wanted them. Uh, and then made a few different adjustments for the darker areas of the image, especially trying to look around this cave area where I boosted the shadows to bring out some details, but uh, pulled down the blacks to make sure I maintained contrast. Uh, and then also boosted the uh, clarity to give a lot more uh, detail to the image, particularly uh, the, the cliff face there where the rocks just look really great here. You can see uh, in the original, they look kind of flat and now they've got a lot more punch. Uh, and then added vibrance, which is really bringing out some of the colors in the sky and the rocks. And I'll bring that up further with luminosity masks in just a second. And then uh, down to the detail, uh, before you go into Photoshop, it's always important to make sure you've got this adjusted the way you want. I always add a little bit of sharpening, uh, masking, um, and typically some luminous noise reduction to all my images, uh, particularly in this case where I've underexposed it a bit. I want to make sure I've got a little bit of noise reduction to make sure I don't have uh, graininess in the sky. And then lastly, um, I'm removing chromatic aberration, which not a, a huge deal in this image. I don't have the sun directly behind these buildings, but probably a little bit of uh, color fringing that I'd see here. And uh, I almost always leave this checked. I just find it almost always makes the, uh, the images better. So those are the quick adjustments I made in Lightroom. Let's jump on over to Photoshop. And so here is that image in Photoshop. And what we're gonna do is use uh, luminosity masking to draw out the detail in the sky here. And uh, if I can point out, as you look here, the details around these trees, there's a lot of intermixing of the sky um, you know, here with these trees. And um, I really couldn't bring this back in, uh, in any easy way using uh, normal brushing techniques or um, other adjustments in either Photoshop or Lightroom. Uh, if I wanted to hand select these areas, I don't know if I could even do it in any realistic way. And if I could, it would certainly take a tremendous amount of time. So what I'm looking for is a tool that's gonna help me darken down the sky back here, bring that color back without darkening down these trees, the buildings in the foreground. I wanna make sure that they look as great as they do now, but bring out that detail in the background. And that's where luminosity masking comes in. It's really all about taking the underlying tones and colors of the image and using those to create masks to guide Photoshop. It, it's a little bit like turning to Photoshop and saying, hey, I want you to darken the sky and, and leave these trees alone. It's almost like that level of communication. That's what it does for me. And so to create that, I'm not gonna go through a lot of the, the details of how you'd create the luminosity masks themselves. I've actually created an action here that uh, is available free uh, on my website. I'll create a link here. You can go to gregbensphotography.com and pick this up. But essentially you run this action and it will create the luminosity masks for any image. So we'll just go ahead and run that. And it doesn't look like it did anything because I've got the channels hidden here. But when we go over to the channels, you can see all these additional areas here. Normally you just have the uh, red, green, and blue channels. These are the various luminosity masks, uh, starting with the, the lights, which essentially will select the lighter areas of the image. 
uh, lights one is a pretty general selection and I'll click on that to show you and essentially uh, the channels masks are the opposite of the layers mask so if you're used to working layers masks um, this is gonna be the inverse but essentially um, anything that is darker here in the channel is selected and anything that's lighter is not and it's a transition from pure white to pure black so there's no pure black nothing here is 100% selected um, however these areas here that are pretty white these are pretty close to uh, not selected at all so this is uh, an adjustment here that if we were to use this mask on the image um, would really um, help select the sky and um, the lighter areas of the water wouldn't really touch the darker caves and darker areas of the buildings um, but would hit the, the face of the rocks here um, so it's a it's a loose selection of the brighter areas as we move down the masks here they're getting more and more selective so the second lights level here a uh, little more specific to the sky versus the foreground and that's the key area that I want to adjust uh, and so on down here it's getting more and more selective to just the brighter areas and I don't have any true bright whites uh, in most of the image so you don't see a whole lot of black left as I get to uh, even brighter uh, selections here there's really just a few areas that are truly um, highlights in the original image it's not um, using the full dynamic range uh, that's that's possible uh, at least not uh, with the image we have so far now the opposite if I wanted to would be uh, dark selection um, the darks one here is the uh, exact inverse of the lights one so you can see what's not selected for the most part is the sky and what is selected are these foreground elements so if I wanted to adjust these trees to uh, change the color to sharpen them etc this would be uh, the the types of masks I want to want to play with and then down here are various mid-tone masks if I wanted to play with the mid-tones but we're just going to adjust the sky here so we, what we really want to play with are these lights masks and I think that this uh, second lights mask really is probably my best bet has a nice separation of the sky versus the foreground here should work really well for us so what we need to do is to load that as a selection and the key to that uh, on the Apple is going to be to command click on the channel if you're on a PC that would be control click um, and you can see the marching ants here so we know that uh, we've made the selection and we just simply click back onto RGB make sure we're looking at um, the the color channels as we want to see them here and then just go back to the, the layers panel and what we will want to do is create an adjustment layer and use curves. I'm going to use the curves to bring down the brightness of that sky. Because I have a selection already in place, it's automatically going to apply that selection. And you can see the adjustment here. If we alt click or option click on that, you can actually see the mask. And as I mentioned, um, for some reason, uh, Adobe has chosen to make the uh, way layers uh, and channels represent the mask uh, to be inverted. So. Um, when we're looking at the layers now, what is white is revealed and what is black is concealed. So that means that any adjustment we make in this curves layer is going to show through most in these brighter areas like this, uh, less so in these somewhat gray areas here, and in these black areas like this, there will be absolutely no change whatsoever. So we'll go over to the curve here. Um, and as I mentioned, we can make some adjustments. I'll just kind of play with it for a second. As you notice, as I drag this down, I'm seeing the sky change quite a bit, but I'm not seeing this cave here change. And that really is the mask blocking that effect. If I were to disable that mask, which you can do by shift clicking it, you can see that this is what the curve would look like with no layer mask on it. So pretty dramatic adjustment to everything. And if I apply the mask, now the adjustments that I make are only going to be applied to the areas that were selected by that mask. So that's going to give us a, a degree of control. So now the question is, what is the right adjustment to make on this curves layer? And one nice thing about the, the curves here is that you always get this little histogram showing you what is um, potentially going to be adjusted by the curves. And you see this narrow band here because that is the area of the image that is selected so that is the sky values here these other values down here the caves etc they don't show up here because they're being blocked by the mask and in fact if we were to invert this mask temporarily you can now see that those values are now showing through 
and those lighter values that were showing there before are now masked out. So we're gonna go back to the mask as we had it, just wanted to show you that. Um, but so this right here becomes some crucial information. So what we're seeing is that the mask is mostly adjusting a bunch of tones in this area here. And so we wanna darken these down. So I'm just gonna take this and go and drop this curve down a fair bit here. And we can see that that's doing a great job of bringing color back in the sky. However, it looks a bit washed out. And what I wanna do is maintain contrast in the sky. And the way that you get contrast is to make the curve steeper in the areas of the tones you wanna adjust. So we know that the tones we're adjusting are these tones in the histogram here. So if we can make the curve as steep as possible here, that will retain that contrast. So I'm just gonna grab the opposite side of that histogram and bring this up. So now we've got really nice contrast and color in the sky, and that looks great to me. The problem is the mask we had isn't perfect. It's done a great job of isolating the sky versus the trees. However, there's some areas here in the rocks and homes that have been hit by this adjustment. As we turn this on and off, you can see those adjustments. Um, and so the mask wasn't perfect uh, in the sense that it's it's got a little bit of collateral damage and we wanna fix that. And there's a couple ways you could do that. You can alt click on your mask and go in here and we could actually paint right on this and just make all this stuff down here black to hide that. Um, and that would just leave us with the upper half of the mask uh, adjusting the sky. Uh, that's one option. Um, there's two reasons I really don't want to uh, to do that here. Um, the first is that if I adjust this, then any changes I make are permanent. If I make a mistake, um, it's difficult or impossible to undo it. So um, if I leave this intact, if I use a non-destructive workflow, that's just gonna give me a little more flexibility. And the second is there's a lot of detail pretty close to the mask edge here, and it's gonna be pretty tedious to black that out um, on here precisely. So that makes uh, point number one even even more important with a, a mask that looks like this. Um, just gonna be easier to leave this one alone. And instead what we can do is actually apply a mask to this mask. And the way that you do that is to create a group and you just control or command G to create a new group, which we have here. And normally you might use a collection of layers in a group. That's more or less what they're designed to do. But one thing you can do with a group is actually go and add uh, a mask to it. And so now the group itself has a mask and anything that's white will show through, anything that bla is black won't. So, you know, if we just simply were to invert this, make it black, we've completely hidden this uh, adjustment. So what we wanna do here is black out these portions on this group here, which will keep the mask from adjusting those areas. And if we make any mistakes along the way, we can easily change and, and undo that. So first thing I'm gonna do here is go and switch over to a gradient uh, mask. It's a quick and easy way for me to actually just darken down the areas below. So I am just gonna draw this out here and quickly drop a little adjustment. And as you can see in the mask here, we have made the bottom of this mask black with a little bit of a transition zone. And that has taken all the adjustment out of the water. It's taken out of most of the rock here. Um, there's still some adjustment in these areas here in the homes. These don't quite look uh, right yet. As we see here, it's still adjusting those. So we can pretty quickly clean that up. And I'm just gonna switch over to a brush, um, set to black paint. Um, I'm gonna increase the flow just a little bit here. I can work fairly quickly. And I've switched over to my Wacom pen. And if you don't have a Wacom tablet, um, I strongly recommend getting one. It really speeds up your workflow whenever you're painting uh, local adjustments and for luminosity masks, it's really helpful. So uh, well worth the investment. You can get one for as cheap as about a hundred bucks. You don't need to get a big one, but any Wacom tablet will really help you out. So we're just gonna go and start kind of painting in these areas here. And as you can see, this orange nasty glow that the home had is already kind of fading away for the front here of these homes. And as I said, I'm gonna work fairly quickly here. If I was doing this uh, for a final image, I might take a little bit more time, but it really isn't too hard to, to do this. Um, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. 
changing my brush size as needed. Make sure I really hit these cliffs. And it's pretty quickly looking pretty darn good to me. Um, we can quickly take a look and see where we've painted, where we haven't. I see there's a bit of a, a miss in this zone here. Um, one thing I like to do a lot is to click and unclick my adjustment and look for areas that don't look right. I can see that this home here, uh, as I'm clicking back and forth, is getting darkened. Not sure it's really a problem here, but if it was, um, I can black out the adjustment there and that's gonna keep that from turning darker. Uh, and I can see the cars on the left side here getting darker, but I actually don't mind that because I don't really want to highlight those cars. A um, few other little adjustments in some of these areas here. But uh, in general, I think we've got a really nice looking mask here. And so we can just sort of see what we've done comparing the original here. So I just alt clicked on the eye icon, which hides everything but the layer click on. So here's where we started coming out of Lightroom. And then what we did is add the curves. And if I just disable the group for a second, we had the uh, adjustment here that made the, the sky look really nice, but it had um, some adjustments in areas we didn't want to, to adjust. And so we added the group mask here to block that off and leaves us overall with this really nice adjustment to the sky. And if we zoom in to just kind of check the details, you can see here on these trees that um, they look great. Here's the original, and we've got the adjustment all the way around these trees um, with no real haloing, no white edges, no telltale edit marks. I'm zoomed in incredibly close here. Um, so you can really see the power that luminosity masks offer to very quickly and easily just zero in on the areas you want to adjust. Uh, in this case, it's a sky adjustment, but there's a number of other things you can do. If I was going to keep editing this, I'd probably start to select the rocks here and draw out even a little more contrast and maybe put a little bit more color back in the ocean. So a lot of ways we can use them, but luminosity masks are a great way of letting the image guide your edits uh, and save you a tremendous amount of time and get on a really nice, natural-looking result.